The 19th Asian Games will take place in Hangzhou, the capital of East China's Zhejiang province, later this month. Chinese traditional dragon boat racing will be held during the Games in a place known as the Land of Fish and Rice and under the category of canoe and kayak. What does this mean for China and what, what implications does it hold for the sport? I was pleased to be joined from Lausanne, Switzerland, by Thomas Koniesko, president of the International Canoe Federation. I started by asking asking him to assess the development of canoeing and kayaking within China. Oh, China is standing on top of all national federations. At least China is among the best uh, federations in the world. We have 171 federations. And all Asian uh, federation made a lot of progress during the last decade, especially China with the three medals in Tokyo. And since years, there is an improvement in, in strength of Chinese paddlers. And I expect the Chinese paddlers will compete with in all disciplines for medals in the Asian Games. Well, help us understand exactly what's the charm of canoe and kayak events. What makes it exciting and that's something the Chinese would love to participate more in? Uh, shiny, sh China is a country of water. So, and that's why water sport is very popular. And the pinnacle of all water sport activities is a high performance water sport. So it's exciting. Uh, we have really good athletes who are in and out of the boats are persons which are important. And, and I think uh, the beauty and the diversity of our sport makes our sport so special. What um, do you think um, made it possible for China to be able to make progress, make some rapid progress, as you mentioned, in international canoe and kayak events, given that it you know, it, China has its own canoe and kayak events. Let's think of, you know, I'm talking about the dragon boat race, but uh, canoe and kayak as it's known internationally was still something quite new. So what has driven China's progress over the past few decades? I can only congratulate Chinese Canoe Federation for its progress, not only since the uh, Olympics in Tokyo. Has the Chinese Canoe Federation proven its strengths and has become one of the strongest Kano Federation. As I said this before, in many of our disciplines, why? This is a difficult question. Maybe I can answer in a very simply way because they did a great job, all the officials, all the coaches, to improve the strengths and, uh, and performance of Chinese athletes. It's hard work and Chinese did hard work. Well, the, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, Asian Games is coming up, are coming up in Hangzhou. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the hardware. Uh, you visited the venues in Hangzhou in March for the canoe events. I understand canoe slalom and canoe sprint. How would you gauge the readiness of the events and what are you expecting to come out of the races? Yes, I was in Hangzhou in March and I was able to see for myself the uh, breathtaking scenery of venues uh, equipped with uh, complete facilities. And I could learn more about, about the professional preparation of Hangzhou organizers. So I'm more than confident that we will experience great competitions, exciting competitions on one of the best venues I have ever seen in the world. And Hangzhou is definitely one of the best venues. In terms of software, you know, the kind of readiness in servers, in the judging parts, I don't know, in all the technical parts, except from the, the uh, hardware aspect, uh, what is your sense of uh, what um, may unfold for the athletes from around the world during the games? So we don't have to talk about hardware because Hangzhou has the best possible hardware on the world available as equipment on the course, but uh, human resources are very important to make for athletes a special experience. And I could learn that each of organizers who is involved in preparation 
want uh, from the bottom of his heart that this competition becomes a success. And I, I think that will realize our athletes as well, and they will enjoy the atmosphere in Hangzhou. Now, um, we talk about Dragon Build. I have to make it clear that uh, Dragon Build traditionally was a Chinese uh, watercraft paddling activity for more than 2,000 years. Puddling together, this special spirit is for kids, adults to, to do sport. It's not only about high performance sport, it's simply also about recreational sport. And I think this special spirit makes Dragon Boat so unique. And it's very difficult for me to compare it with other sports, but you can nowhere in our other disciplines experience this special atmosphere. Mm, it's the only group canoe and kayak sport would you say that's available at this moment in in terms of a race no no we have another this uh, we have another federation we are working closely together and uh, this federation will organize uh, races in um, asian champion uh, asian games in september and we will organize the biggest event in the world, 2025 in Chengdu, in the World Games. So there are many people who are working to make uh, Dragon Boat still more popular. I see. Okay, um, Dragon Boat at this moment is not yet an Olympic sport. It's uh, listed as an um, Asian Games sport in 2010 and at Tokyo Olympic Games in 2021, it was still a demonstration sport. So um, can we expect Dragon Ball to be eventually listed as an Olympic sport? What is your opinion of the, of the eventual prospect? I think it was a milestone to have Dragon Ball as a demonstration sport in Tokyo during our Olympic events. And we had a lot of dignities, athletes, who presented unfortunately only to other athletes because of the COVID situation, this great sport. And I think we could attract some of the IUC members who joined this uh, demonstration event. But of course, we have to fight together to promote our sport, to make sport still better. But I already had talks with uh, Chinese authorities and I promise that ICF and Chinese and other federations will work together to convince the International Olympic Committee to consider one day Dragon Boat as an Olympic sport. At the same time, 
Uh, my understanding is that more and more Chinese people are also interested, are also into canoe and kayak in the sense that's known to people outside of China. And China has lots of rivers and lakes. So what's your expectation of canoe and kayak events being as popular in China in the near future as in some other parts of the world, aside from Dragon Boat? Uh, you know, almost everyone has already contacted in his life with a uh, canoe. Uh, maybe uh, during a vacation, using a canoe for recreational activities. So you can do canoeing almost everywhere in the world. So far you have water. And that's why canoe in general is popular. And we have to use this popularity to make our Olympic discipline still more popular. And therefore we need competitions, especially competitions outside Europe. And in the past, uh, unfortunately, most of our big competitions took place in Europe and uh, the new leadership and uh, myself, we want to change the situation. And we really appreciate it, for example, application from Hangzhou for our ICF Super Cup next year. So we want to bring more competitions to continents outside Europe and Asia and especially China with the uh, strength to organize big competitions is one of the best places in Asia to make our sport still more popular. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Thomas Koniesko, President of the International Canoe Foot Federation, joining us from Lausanne, Switzerland. Thank you, Christine. And that's it for this edition of The Point with me, Lu Xin. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle Lu Xin in Beijing. On behalf of the whole team, thank you for watching. You've got The Point.